Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, keep those hands going for Jesus. Come on, everybody, hand all over the building. Hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus one more time on tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you on tonight, Lord. Come on, just lift those hands all over the building tonight. Now, I knew we grew up doing this and lifting your hands and closing your eyes, but on tonight, from the depths of your soul, from your heart, I want you to clear everything off of your mind. Don't worry about the bills. Don't worry about the kids. Don't worry about the husband, the wife. Don't worry about the sickness, the heartache, the pain. But on tonight, don't look around at the person that's sitting next to you. For God opening up your eyes this morning, camping his angels around you. I want your eyes to be closed and every hand lifted. And just get a worship on your lips. From the depths of your soul. Make it personal tonight. Somebody came for deliverance. Somebody can't leave out of here the same way that they came. Somebody need a breakthrough on tonight. Let the tears fall. Somebody ain't cried in a long, long time. Let God touch you in that place where you haven't been touched in so many years, so many months. Don't worry about what's going on around you. Just tell God how much you love Him. Tell them how much you appreciate them. Tell them you thank him for everything that he's doing. Every sickness, every heartache, every disappointment. Lord, we worship you on tonight, Lord. We magnify you on tonight, Jesus. It's somebody that didn't come in to play. It's somebody that came in for deliverance. It's somebody that came in to be set free. I don't care what happened on the job today. I don't care what went on before you made it here. Close your eyes and just worship Jesus. Real, real sweet. Finna get ready and enter in. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him. Tell him how sweet he's been. Tell him how much you adore. Lord, we appreciate you on tonight, Lord. Lord, I thank you for every type of situation. Thank you for what you're sending me through right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can't say nothing, just say hallelujah. I promise you if you close your eyes, you'll feel the presence of God on tonight. And you get a worship on your lips. I promise you God will loose the shackles and break the chains on tonight. That's it, that's it. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Glory to your name, Jesus. Somebody's supposed to be dead right now. Body riddled with cancer, HIV, but God spared your life. Depression, suicide, supposed to took you out. But God spared your life. Heartache and pain, even before you drove up on the ground. But God still let you make your way into the house of God on tonight. You making mistakes and seem like you're falling. But he said, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I give you peace. You went through something that hurt you. But God gonna give you strength through this. He gonna give you strength to pull through this one right here. I impart strength into you. I impart strength into you on tonight. Some people in here, I see the tears just falling. Anybody can praise, but everybody can't worship. The enemy come to distract you. Hallelujah. But I don't let nothing distract me from doing what God want me to do. God can take your breath at any minute, any second. You don't know the day nor the hour. It's the appointed time right now to worship him. Or he wouldn't let you be in here on tonight. He wouldn't allow you to lift your hands on tonight. The shackles going to be loosed on tonight. The heavy burden going to be lifted on tonight. The bands of wickedness is going to be lifted on tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you on tonight, Lord. Lord, I magnify you, Jesus. Lord, and I praise you. There's nobody greater than you, Jesus. My soul love you on tonight. If you can, take a little bass out. Lord, we appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before you have your seat, I want everybody in here to put their hands together as we reverence the King of kings and Lord of lords. Come on, put your hands together. Make some noise for King Jesus on tonight. I didn't say your boss on your job. I didn't say me. I said give it up for the King of King and Lord of Lords. Give it up for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give it up for Jesus on tonight. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for our pastor and overseer. The Apostle Dale Glenn McCoy for giving us this opportunity on tonight to be able to minister unto you tonight. Worship is a is vital. I'm, I'm just a worshiper. I love the worship. Anybody can praise, but I just love, love to worship God. You just get lost. You just get in the zone and just worship him. And the tears start falling. I don't care what you 
that went through, I don't care what situation you're going through in your mind, whatever you're going, God will loose it. It's something about that worship. It's something about that worship. But I thank God for my wife and my kids being here with me on tonight. Hallelujah. Thank God for them. Thank God for all these great hosts of elders being in our midst on today. Hallelujah. Come on, give it up for them. Hallelujah. We thank God for them. Thank God for being in Jacksonville one more time. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. How many excited about God on tonight? I believe God got a miracle with somebody's name on it. I always hear the man of God say it on. People don't remember what you, how it first started. They remember the ending. They remember the, the ending of a thing. We're going to go into this word on tonight. You're going to have to pay close attention. I ain't trying to be no wonder. I ain't trying to be nobody. When God saved me, I was coming up Interstate 10 with a couple ounces of cocaine in the car. Addicted to cocaine, hair run, drinking, smoking, popping over 100 pills a week. Messed up and coming up the interstate and looked on the passion side seat of my car and seen a legion of demons. Never stood before people, didn't even think I was ever going to preach the gospel. That was a far thing from my mind. But that day in that car, I think almost seven years ago, God saved my life and turned my life around and turned me into a preacher. And here I stand before you today. So what, I, what God give me, it ain't coming from the, a book. It ain't coming from, it's coming through the trials and tribulations and the heartache and the pain that you have to go through every day. But I believe God got a word with somebody's name on it today. Because if he can save me, he can save anybody. I don't care what you're going through in your mind, your body your soul on tonight if you could pay attention and just bear with me God got a miracle with your name on it tonight I promise you that I believe it I believe that if you have your Bibles quickly turn your Bibles to Genesis the first chapter Genesis 1 and 26. We got a couple of scriptures. I don't know how God going to take this, but however he take it is good for me. He in control of everything. Genesis 1 and 26. If you have it, say amen. And the Bible reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the, of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now we're going to deal with the words. Can you turn the bass down in the monitors? Hallelujah. We're going to deal with the word image and likeness. Remember that. Remember them two words. Image and likeness. Remember them two words. Turn your Bibles to Genesis, the fifth chapter on tonight. Genesis 5 and 1. We'll start at the first chapter. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the image, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them 
and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name self. Turn your Bibles to Romans. Romans. Romans the 8th chapter starting at the 3rd verse. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh 1 Corinthians 15 and 45 I can quote it but God wanted me to read it because when I start preaching it I want you to understand what what I'm saying, so it won't sound crazy. First Corinthians 15 and 45. You'll see that it's in the word. And so it was written. The first man, Adam, was a man, was a made, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Let's Hurry up and do this. Genesis, the second chapter, starting at the seventh verse. Hallelujah. Somebody finna get delivered on tonight. Somebody finna get set free. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what your situation is tonight. God finna do it. Genesis 2. Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis 2 and 7. If you have it, say amen. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. I got like two more scriptures. John 8 and 29. Remember image and likeness. John 8 and 29. Lord, have your way. Let the people see this word, Lord, please. Let me utter it just like you gave it unto me. 8 and 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. James 2 and 26. Then one more scripture after that. James 2 and 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Finally, scripture, we're going to end it right here. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of a sound mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for every sin on tonight, Lord. Known or unknown, seen or unseen. Lord, I ask that you take away pride and arrogance, Lord. Lust. Whatever's in me that's not like you, Lord. Lord, I ask that you let me utter this word with clarity, Lord. Lord, you gave me this word last week, Lord. And you kept it in my spirit and preached it to me up until today. Lord, let the people see it, Lord, like you gave it to them. Let the people see you and not me, Lord. Lord, please let such an anointing rest up in this place, Lord, on tonight. On every set, under the sound of my voice. Lord, I praise you. I give you all the glory and all the praise. Your son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. I just like to look at it until I get in, get into it. It's like a comfort zone sitting up here. Hallelujah. But God gave me this word. You're going to have to pay close attention because if you don't know the word, then you'll think that it ain't in the word if you don't read your Bible. 
But I was sitting at the house, and God kept preaching his word to me. But how he gave it to me, Apostle McCall was ministering. I think it was last week or something like that. And he said something. I think it was in slide there. It was somewhere. But he said one word, and it stuck out in my mind. And God went to dealing with me with this one, with this one word. I wrote a couple of notes because I don't normally write notes, but I want you to get this on tonight. Because God spoke to me. He said, son, we got to get the spirit. See, there's a lot of people sitting in church, but they don't have the spirit of God. You could be sitting in the church, but don't have the spirit. But when God gave me this word, it like quickened my spirit because I ain't never seen it. He like opened up my eyes like that. He said, son, you got to understand. He said, when I created Adam, he said, in the beginning, God created. Remember that now. In the beginning, God. But God always tell me, take it one step farther. In the beginning, God created. So when God created, that means he created everything. That means he created every trial you're going through, every situation, every heartache, every pain. I don't care what it is. God created. Then the Bible go right down the line and say, when I made man, when I made Adam, I created Adam in my image and after my likeness. And I looked up the Greek word for image. And it's like a mirror, like a reflection. And likeness is like if you see something like, like, man, he got on a shirt just like me. It's something that's just like him. But I'm going to break something down on tonight. Watch what, just listen, pay attention to the word. Lord, help me on this. Please let them see it, how you gave it to me. Image, image and likeness. Remember that now. So I looked up the word image. And the word image is like a reflection, a self-reflection. You look in the mirror and you can see that this is an image. You know, when somebody have a child, boy, he the spitting image of his daddy. When somebody, boy, he act just like his daddy. So God told me and he showed me. He said, son, it ain't nothing but a, it ain't nothing but a mirror. It's the image. He said, a mirror show you what's on the outside, but it don't show you what's in the inside. He said, likeness, you can, you, can, you can have a child, and they can have a daddy or something, but the daddy could be living saved, but the child look like the daddy, but the child is full of the devil. Yeah, boy, he don't act nothing like his dad. His daddy wasn't like that when he, when he grew up. His daddy, his daddy wasn't nothing, wasn't nothing like that. Nothing like that. So what God was showing me through this word was that the image ain't nothing but like a picture. The image is that, but you got to understand when he created Adam, he gave Adam dominion and he gave him power over all the beasts of the field, over all the fowls of the air. But you have to remember one thing. Adam, see, watch this. When you breathe breath into somebody, the Bible say, when God formed man, he formed man the dust of the ground. And he blew the breath of life into his nostril. And he became a living soul. Now the Bible say, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. The Bible turned right back around. If you go back to Genesis, it said, when he created man, he made him in his image. He made him at, after his likeness. Then the Bible say, Adam. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. I ain't trying to be no wonder. I ain't trying to be no wonder. Hallelujah. Now watch watch this. This is gonna bless you on tonight. Don't let don't let preachers fool you like they don't like they don't get nervous. But I want you to get, I preach all the time, tense and all this, but I want you to get this. I don't normally write stuff down, but I want you to see this. Because this going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little tricky. But it ain't tricky. It's the word of God. Oh, 
Okay, then, here we go. The Bible says he blew the breath of life. I, I quote it, but I want to go back and see it. He said, I blew the breath of life into his nostril, and he became a living soul. Remember that. He became a living soul. Then the Bible turned right back around later on in another chapter somewhere. The Bible say Adam, first God created Adam. The first Adam was a living soul, but that second Adam was a quickening spirit. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses now, let every word be established. He told you he blew the breath of life inside Adam and Adam became a living soul but he never said Adam became a living spirit see what you got to understand God is finna get ready and take us to a whole nother level in him God finna get ready and take us where we finna get something that Adam didn't have see Adam didn't have the spirit living inside of him so you got to understand when God came to Adam and said Adam what art thou what are you Adam Adam was hiding he said why are you hiding because I was afraid. No. Because I don't give you the spirit of fear but of power, love and of a sound mind. See what you got to understand. Adam didn't have the spirit of God. He only had the likeness and the image. See a lot of us sitting in church with the image and with the likeness but we don't have the spirit living inside of us. I told God Lord please don't let me fool around and lose what's in me messing around trying to see what's on the outside a lot of people worry about how they look how they smell I'm talking about all of this outer appeal but they ain't worried about what's in the inside see I want God to check the inside of me because I don't want to just be a dead the Bible the Bible said without the spirit with the spirit is dead also faith without works is dead the body without the spirit is dead and faith without works is there. You got to understand that Adam's body was a dead body from the beginning because it didn't have the spirit of God. The spirit of God quickening and making things alive. See, you got to understand that God is finna take us to a realm where we gonna walk in the spirit 24 hours a day. We finna get ready to walk in the anointing 24 hours a day. No, just sit down. I'm gonna preach but I want you to see this. He breathed the breath of life into Adam. And Adam became a living soul. See, God don't give you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. So what I'm what the the realm I want to enter into, I'm tired of coming to church acting like I got the spirit, but then leaving don't have the spirit. See, because you can get preached to all day long. That don't mean that you can shout, you can jump, you can do all this, you can say all this, or you can get up. But it don't matter if you've been 30 years, 20 years, 15 years. You, don't, you, you won't have a spirit of God. You'll have a form of godliness, but be denying the power thereof. See, what people don't want to do, they don't want to tell the truth no more. They don't want to preach the word to the fullness no more. When I walked to the back, God said, don't look at the faces of the people. He said, even as I with Moses, so shall I be with thee. I believe what God's word say. Now, let's take our time. We ain't in no rush tonight. See, you got to understand. I don't normally write no, but God got it. He said it's going to be a weird, funny anointing in here tonight. You know, the, you know, the Bible said in the beginning, God created so in the beginning, God created, if he made Adam in his likeness, in his image, Adam, the only thing Adam could do was create. Adam didn't have the spirit of God. Adam did not have the spirit of God because if Adam had the spirit of God, when God came to him, God ain't fear and God ain't scared, so God wouldn't have been hiding. See, what you got to understand, a lot, of, a lot of us is hiding because we don't have the spirit of God. So we try to hide from the thing that is God. See, if you got the spirit living inside of you, it ain't going to give you the spirit of fear. It ain't going to make you want to run. It ain't going to make you want to bag up. When the enemy came to Jesus and Jesus had been fast, he said, you know what I want you to do? He said, you've been fasting 40 nights and 40 days. He said, you know what? I want you to turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, what? Now, this is this the spirit talking. The spirit said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You know why Adam didn't have no word? Because he didn't, he didn't have no spirit because he didn't have no word in him to come back. You know why? Because... Oh, you got to understand that Jesus Christ hadn't died yet for our sin. Let me read this to you. I don't, I don't want to rush nothing. I don't want to rush nothing. Somebody going to catch this on tonight. Turn your Bible to John. John 16 and 7. Lord, you have your way. 
Man, I do a lot of screaming under tents and everywhere else. It's sometimes it'd be time to just teach. Listen to this now. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not depart, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Turn, to, turn right over to John, the 12th and 24th chapter. 12th and 21st verse, 24th verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. See, what you got to understand here, nothing had died to be able to bring forth fruit to get out of it. That thing that God is trying to give us now. I don't want to be sitting around with the same old word over and over. I want God to take me to another realm. I'm dealing with depression. You know what I want? I want a word that's going to overcome depression. I'm dealing with sickness. I want a word that's going to give me overcoming power over sickness. I just don't want the power to be able to speak. I want the power to be able for the thing that come to pass. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I want it to also quicken my mortal body. I just don't want to be sitting around with that the spirit living inside of me. See the spirit quickening. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. See what we got to get. We got to get the spirit again. We got to get the Holy Ghost. We got to get the comfort of everybody walking around but they ain't got the comforter. They ain't got the Holy Ghost. They ain't got that real power. They ain't got that real word living in them no more. See, everybody come to church for a fashion show. I don't want to see no fashion show. You know what I want? I want deliverance. I want to be able to lay my hands on somebody's eyes and they come back open. See, I'm not just quoting this just to quote it. This is what I really want to be. I really want to be like Jesus. I'm tired of not seeing the miracles. I'm tired of reading this what God said. I gave him power to overcome all power, all manner of sickness. All, I give you power. Go out and heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out devils. That's what I want to do. I'm tired of sitting around just playing church. I'm tired. If God give me something inside of me, the same anointing that he gave me, that he gave he left here, it dwells in me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You got to understand that God gave us something with power in it. You know what the power is? The power is the spirit. But if we don't get the spirit of Christ, then we can't do nothing. I don't care how much you pray, how much you lay hands, how much you do this. If you don't get the Holy Ghost in this hour, then you ain't going to be worth a dime. I'm talking about with all the stuff that's going on in America and in the world right now. I'm talking about every day. I don't care if you admit it or not. You're getting frustrated and angry. And I'm talking about all type of stuff. I hit your mind in a heartbeat. You got to learn how to overcome evil with good. How to run the good for evil. See, people got to get back to the cross here. See, what you searching for, you searching for that Adam. But I ain't searching for that Adam. I'm searching for that Jesus. I'm searching for that spirit. I'm searching for that anointing. I'm searching for that glory. I want that power. I want that spirit of Christ living in the inside of me. See, you ain't got to look around and do all of that just to know somebody ain't got the spirit. All you got to do is get in Galatians, the sixth chapter, and it'll show you that I'm love, I'm peace, I'm overcoming power, I'm all of this, I'm temperance. No, but don't nobody want to get in that no more because everybody worried about prophesying. Everybody worried about getting a dime. Everybody worrying about going to work. Everybody worrying about doing this and doing that. No, that ain't on my mind. You know why? Because I see too many people sick. Too many people going through. Too many people bound. You know how many people bound right now with depression on their mind? You know how many people been in Trump? Uh, been in Trump and Zion for 20 and 30 some years that don't have the spirit of God no more I know you gonna get mad on tonight but God gonna lose somebody he gonna break the shackles and he gonna lose the chain see I ain't come to play with your soul I ain't come to play with your mind I come to bring deliverance through Jesus Christ through the spoken word on tonight we finna go to a, a higher level God is trying to make us in his image and after his likeness he's trying to give us the spirit of God he's trying to 
put something in us. We don't just want the image and the likeness. We want the spirit to go along with it. It ain't nothing to just look like your daddy. If he say no, I don't want to just look like him. I want what's in him. I want what he left me. I want my inheritance. I want what he gave me in the last day. So you got to understand that he going to pull his spirit out on all flesh. God is going to get ready to raise apostles and prophets. I'm talking about God finna get ready and do it all in this last hour. But we got to be willing to go the extra step. We got to be willing to go the extra mile because you know why? Because God ain't playing with us in this hour. If you don't have the spirit of God, then you're going to see a lot of people falling off. But I don't want to fall off because I don't have the spirit. I don't want to fall off because I can't live right. I don't want to talk right. I don't want to act right. Now God is taking this a whole nother way. I know I felt a strange anointing in the place on today, but I guarantee you somebody gonna get the shackles loose. I'm talking about, I don't care if you've been dealing with cancer in your body for the last 20 years. Oh, tonight I believe God is gonna set you free. I believe God is gonna dry up HIV, depression, I'm talking about sugar, diabetes. See, I don't care about none of that stuff. You know why? Because I know God gave me something that can speak to the storm and say, peace, be still. See, all you need is a reminder to let you know that Jesus is still on the throne and he reign. You know why? Because I believe in the miracle working power of God. I believe every day when I look up in the mirror and I see me that God delivered from the age of 14 years old that was snorting cocaine and have all. I'm talking about for 17 years messed up. If God can bring me out, I don't care what he do. I don't care what you going I don't care what you're going through. God is going to get ready and move on tonight. Now the Bible say in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was void. And without form in the spirit of God, I'm paraphrasing. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the wall. Is what you got to understand is the spirit is moving. I'm talking about the eyes of the Lord is running to and fro seeking to prove himself mighty on the behalf of them that trust in him. See the spirit of God is moving. He's looking for a vessel that he can it can rest up on, but God can't rest up on us because we one way in the church and we another way outside the church. God can't rest up in no unclean temple. You leave out of here, you're going to eat your pork chops. I'm talking about you're going to eat whatever you want to eat. Your hog mouths, you're going to eat whatever you want to eat. Your shrimp, you're going to eat your crawfish. I know you're going to get mad on tonight, but then you get up in here, you act like you got the spirit. No, the spirit going to tell you not to eat that unclean stuff. The spirit going to tell you if you was in that real spirit, that same spirit that saved you when you first got saved, that took you off of all that, it ain't going to send you back on that stuff no more. And then you get in the prayer line. Now you can't get healed because you know why? Because you've been doing something. You done step out of the world. You done step out of the spirit. You done step out of God. See, you just can't step out of God and think that you're going to eat your, have your cake and eat it too. No. God looking for a people that's going to obey. Obedience is better than the sacrifice. See, God is coming and he's ready to clean the house because he's tired of looking down and can't find nobody that want a holy follow him. Yeah, you might go through trials and tribulation, but you ain't going to stay in your trials. You ain't going to stay in your tribulation. You ain't going to stay in your heartache and in your pain. God is looking for some real soldier in this hour. Can God get anybody that's willing to go the extra mile? Can God get anybody that's willing to get a mind? Let this mind be in them that was also in Christ Jesus. I want a mind like Christ. I want Christ to dwell in this temple. I want him to use me in every way that he can. I just don't want to be sitting in the pew for I'm talking about year after year after year. Now watch this. Why would God give you something and just want you to sit in the house with it? No, he don't want you to sit in the house with it. He wants you to get up and go heal somebody. I'm talking about you talking about you got the Holy Ghost. Then go hit the hospitals. You talking about you got the Holy Ghost. Then go hit the streets. You know how many people sick and bound? You got a word that can loose them. I'm talking about you made in the image and likeness of God. He gave you that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. See, you got to understand the only way that you get this power, sweet and bitter water can't proceed out of the same fountain. You up every day raising your hands in the air, but then when you leave out, you 
doing the same thing that you came out of. Oh, you think God going to take you back to the same thing? No, he's not going to take you back to the same thing that you came out of. Yeah, I believe I, God just gave me another word for this season. No, what type of word he gave you for this season? Is that word that same word that he gave you when he first saved you? Oh, you got to get that Holy Ghost again. You got to get on your knees and pray for the Holy Ghost. You want to be a deliverer? Get the Holy Ghost. You sitting up in the house? What's the use? You sitting up in the house and you ain't got no power. You got your kids that bow. You got your kids that's going through. Yeah, God might let you go through for a little while, but one day, boy, you'll open up your mouth. I don't care if they're on drugs. I don't care if they're in the penitentiary. I don't care if they've been locked up for 20 years. See, I'm not just speaking a word. I'm talking about I done seen it happen. God will use you to speak a word. I don't care if they've been bound for 25 years with life on death row. It don't matter. God can speak a word in the next three months. They'll come walking out of jail. You know why? Because God will allow you to do it. He allowed me to speak a word. I want to speak a word into somebody's life and they'll get back up. Off the, I'm talking about off of, the, off of the hospital bed. How many of y'all going in the hospital and seeing your mamas, your daddies, your sisters, and your brothers laying up but ain't got no power because you don't want to live right. No, it's time to live right. You know the code. Do you holy? For I am holy. You got to get your, you got to get back in check. You got to ask God, Lord, go deep down inside of me. I want to be set free. I'm tired of dealing with these familiar spirit. I'm tired of getting out of church and going to click on porno. I'm tired of going home and masturbating. Yeah, Lord, you done took this a whole nother way. You got to understand that God is looking for a willing vessel in this last hour. You think because you're young that God won't do nothing to you? No, you got to understand. God will have mercy on your soul. But he says, shall you continue in sin? That grace shall abound. God forbid. See, you want that thing that Adam didn't have. You want that Holy Ghost. You want that power. You want that anointing. You want that glory. You want something up on you. That when you walk out of the house, there'll be a glow that shine around your head. I'm talking about you want that power. You want that glory. When the people see you, they'll just know it's something different about that person right there something different about that sister something different about that brother that brother right there he just got I want him to pray for me you know why because I just believe that Jesus is living in him you want God living in you you don't want God I'm talking about won't come next to you you wonder why you going through trial after trial heartache after heartache pain after pain you looking at the man that gave up everything for God I was in college and school doing all of this God had opened up a door for me to get in culinary school that's kind of hard for you to do to get in college and I had already been there two times coming out the streets I didn't care about no college all I wanted was the grant money so I went back that third time after God saved me all of a sudden I'm sitting in class one day and God said you know what son I want you to leave college because I'm going to bless you listen if God don't give you the same fate I said everywhere I go don't you go in college and quit college don't you go on your job and quit your job you stay on your job to God give you an open door. Now you got to understand, God open up doors for me. I'm talking about I ain't understand that people are talking about me. They calling me crazy. This boy crazy. He hearing voices. But I wasn't hearing no voices. I was hearing the voice. You know what? I was hearing in the beginning, God. I was hearing uh-uh. It don't matter what you going through. I'll bring you through it. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. That's what I was hearing at that time. You got to understand that God was raised me up but I didn't understand jobs that paid a whole lot of money God said turn it down I don't want you to go God, I don't want you to do it you know why because he was molding me he was making me but you can't understand see you don't want to go through the trial you don't want to go through the heartache you don't want to go through the pain it's a sad thing to been going through the pain for 20 years and you right there at the door and you ready to give up how you gonna give up after you done suffer for a hundred years no you better keep on going God just got to get a little more stuff out of you. That's all he got to do. All he's trying to do is get that pride. All he's trying to do is get that arrogance. All he's trying to do is get that lust. All he's trying to do is get that envy. All he's trying to do is get that jealousy. I'm talking about somebody woke up in a church and that thing is still hitting you in the stomach. No, you ain't delivered yet. You got to get free. You got to ask God. Lord, go all the way down in me because I want to be you. So people are talking about me. They telling me you got to be crazy. I, God, open up that got to be God opened up a door. 
They got to be God. God open up a door for you. God open up a door. How you just going to leave? How you just going to quit this? Because you don't understand me. But you don't understand when you hear that voice. The same voice that you heard with God. When God first saved you. When you dropped everything. It didn't matter what you was doing. It didn't matter what you was going through. It didn't matter what God said. You was dropping it. And you was ready to do it. What happened to that hunger? What happened to that thirst? What got you so dead sitting in the house of God? What got you when you ain't got a hunger? When God used to wake you up at 6 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, and you was going to your prayer room and you was praying, and you was seeking God, telling God to endure you with power from on high. What happened to that power? What happened to that anointing? What happened to that glory? When everybody was calling you, they wanted you, they wouldn't go to nobody else in the family. They only wanted you to pray for them. What happened to that power? When they see you making a stand for the name of Jesus Christ, now they see you with your pants on your tight dresses. What happened when you wouldn't dress like that years ago? What happened to that power? You know what? You know what happened? Somewhere down the line you stepped out the spirit and you stepped into flesh but oh tonight God is asking somebody he pleading with him telling them to come back unto me all you that labor and heaven laden come unto me and I give you rest. You know why? Somebody tired of home mother. Somebody tired of fornicator. Somebody tired of doing what they do out there in the school. Somebody tired of not having the spirit of God, having to come in the house and fake like they shouting, fake like they speaking in tongues, knowing when they go back home, they got to deal with this. Knowing that when they go back home, they got to deal with heartache. They got to deal with that hard-headed husband, that hard-headed wife. You got to get that power. You know, the only thing that's going to save you in this hour is going to be the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to save you. You get that quickening power, and I promise you, it don't matter what you go through. It don't matter what you go through. That Holy Ghost will come up out of you like fire. I don't care what you going through in this last hour. God is raising up soldiers in this hour. I'm talking about if you believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you will be on your feet. I'm talking about you are bear witness with this message that I'm pushing to you on tonight. Because God is looking for soldiers. He's looking for somebody with that power. He's looking for somebody he can pull in too. God has just took this in a whole nother level. I want to preach on that image. I want to preach on that likeness. So you got to get the image. You got to get the likeness again. I'm talking about he made man in his image. After his likeness here. You got to get that image again. You want to look like your daddy? You want to act like your daddy? The only way you can act like him and look like him is you get what's in him. You got to get what's in him. What's in him? That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It shall quicken your mortal body. Oh, you got to understand that. That Jesus did always the thing that pleased the Father. See, you got to understand Adam didn't have the spirit because the, the spirit would have always did the things that pleased the Father. See, the spirit wouldn't have been contrary to the world. Look at Jesus. Now, nah, what you think? What you think? That I ain't going to turn, that I'm going to turn these stones into bread? No. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. See, you got to get that word that's going to proceed out of your mouth. You got to get that word that's going to proceed out of your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Give me a little base. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. See, you got to understand, if Adam had that spirit, see, the same anointing, see, now watch here. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. See, when the enemy come in like a flood, that spirit would have stood up and Adam and would have told him, nah, you crazy. I ain't doing that. You know why? Because my daddy, I got a word that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. That weeping man do it for a night, but joy got to come in the morning. That these light afflictions are but for a moment. Even though you slay me, yet will I trust in you. See, God don't give you the spirit of fear. See, you walking around with the spirit of fear. See, watch this. You got to understand that the Bible says what God, God sent in his only son in the likeness, in the likeness, in the likeness. Now watch this. We know that Jesus didn't have no sin in him. Jesus didn't have no sin, but he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now watch this. You got to understand if you made in the likeness of 
something you just may in the likeness of it that don't mean that's what you are that's what I'm trying to show you about Adam Adam didn't have the spirit of God but God is trying to give us this spirit he's trying to give us this latter day revival and it's going to only come to the ones that want it it's going to only come to the ones that want that glory that's seeking God that's waking up when the last time you been on a 21 day fast when the last time you to put down that chicken I'm talking about them steaks and them potatoes when the last time when the last time God been able to use you when the last time see you you sitting around wondering why God can't use you because he's looking for somebody just like him God only used people that's just like him that's made in his, in his image and after his likeness that got his spirit how can he use something outside of the spirit he, if he uses something outside of the spirit it's going to have a form of God and going to be able to transform himself into an angel of light see you got Satan. I'm talking about the Bible say the serpent was more subtle than any beast. You got to pay attention to this word on tonight. It might not seem like nothing, but you can't like the man of God always say. You can't see nothing coming out my mouth, but you got to understand that it's spirits that's knocking depression off of your mind. That's knocking horse spirits off of your mind. That's knocking sickness off of your mind. That's knocking all type of disease off of your body. So you got to understand that in this last day, in this last hour is going to be a spoken word revival. See, it's going to be a spoken word revival in this latter day. It's going to be a spoken word revival in this last day. See, you know what I want? I want that thing that was in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. I want that same thing that quicken your body. I want that same thing that Jesus Christ had. I want to be able to walk up to the gates of beautiful. And it's a lame man that's been laying there all of his life. And God said, get up and start back walking. See, I want that thing when I walk through the crowd and you can grab on the hem of my garment and be made whole. You know what I want? I want that thing where I just be able to walk by and lay my hands on your eyes. And your eyes come back open naturally and spiritually. You know what I want? I want that thing that'll be able to put my hands on a man's tongue and it rip back out. You know what I want? I want that thing that'll be able to speak to a dead body that's been dead for four days and stinking and it get back up. You know what I want? I want that thing that Jesus had. I want that spirit as you are. So I know as I am, so are you in this world. That same spirit that raised Jesus Christ. You might hear me quoting the same scripture. It's going to get in your spirit tonight. So you got to understand that the servant can't be above the master, neither the, the disciple above his Lord, but he shall be as the master. He shall be as the Lord. See, you just like Jesus, but you don't even know it. You made in his image and his likeness, and you don't even know it. See, you are. You don't even know what you are. You don't even know who you are. You sitting around playing. You sitting around talking. And you sitting around starting mess. When you can be acting just like Jesus. If you start talking like Jesus, ain't gonna be no time for backbiting. If you start talking like Jesus, it ain't gonna be no time for gossip. If you start talking like Jesus, it ain't gonna be no time to be on the phone with that man talking nasty. Be on the phone with that sister talking nasty. I'm talking about if you were thinking like Jesus, if you wanted to be like Jesus, then you will be no time to be out there home mugging and fornicating and smoking and drinking and committing adultery. See, I'm talking about if you want to be like Jesus, if Jesus was your main priority, then you would give him everything you gave him like when you first got saved. You would give him everything. Lord, take it all. Lord, just don't take my crown. Lord, take it all. Lord, Lord, take it all. Take it all. Lord, you can have it all. Do me like you did me when you first saved me, Lord. Give me that hunger. Give me that thirst to give. Lord, give me something in me, God, give me something in me. I want that power. Lord, I want that anointing in me. Lord, I want that glory on tonight. Somebody ain't gonna play with God no more. Somebody ain't gonna sit down no more. Somebody ain't gonna look around no more at nobody else. You know what you're getting ready to do in this hour? You're getting ready to take it another step. You're getting ready to ask God. Lord, make me in your image and your likeness. Lord, make me and give me that power. Lord, give me that thing that you gave Jesus. Lord, I don't want that Adam no more. I just don't want the power. I want the spirit with the power. I want to be able to speak to the star and say peace be still. 
feel. I want to be able to speak to the star and tell him, behave. I want to be able to speak in my house when my wife acting crazy, when my husband acting crazy. I want to be able to speak to her and send her, calm down. You don't know what you're going through until you really start going through it. If you get that power, if you get that spirit, if you get Jesus, then you ain't got to worry about none of that. So you looking at me, but I'm getting ready to get ready to be translated into another person. I'm getting ready to get translated into a higher height. I'm getting ready to be translated with that power. I'm getting ready to get translated. You looking at me, but you don't know what you looking at. I'm getting ready to be like Jesus. I'm getting ready to speak to the sick, and they're getting ready to get healed. I'm getting ready to speak to the sick, and they're going to get back up. I'm getting ready to speak to the sick, and they're going to be made whole. You don't know what you're going through. It's time on right now to speak that word. It's time right now to let people know about the gospel of Jesus. It's time right now. It ain't time to sit down on God no more. It ain't time right now to start to speak that word no more. It ain't time no more not to speak that word. It ain't time no more to be walking around here powerless. It ain't time no more to be looking at everybody else. I don't want to look at nobody. You know what I want to look at? I want to look at what come in my head. I want to be just like Jesus. The Bible says, blessed is the man that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scoffer, but is the light, but his the light, but his the light is in the law of the Lord, and in the law do we meditate day and night. You shall be like a tree planted by the rooms of water. Every time I go up, take me a little bit higher. We finna get ready to have some church up in this place on tonight. God is finna loose the shackles. Ain't no way. Ain't no use of looking at me because we finna have some power in this last hour. We finna have some anointing in this last hour. I'm going up like Jesus. I'm going up to the pinnacle and I'm telling the enemy, you can't have me no more. You can't have my mind. You can't have my body. You can't have my soul. I want that power to resonate through me. I want that power in my body. I want that power. All over me. You don't know who you're looking at. You don't know who you are. You don't know where you're going until you've been there. I want that power. I gotta be by that power. I gotta feel that glory. I want God to use me in every single way. You sitting down with depression, I rebuke depression. You sitting down with sickness, I rebuke sickness. Everything Jesus put his hands on was made whole. Where everything that I speak through tonight is going to be made whole. Be made whole in your house. Be made whole on your jobs. Be made whole in your bodies. Be made whole in your homes. Turn me up a little bit. It's time to go higher. I want that glory. I want that same power that raised Jesus from the dead to quicken my mortal body. See, you got to. Get about your dead situation. Ask God, point to me like you did when I first received you. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. We coming into that next realm. We coming where the wicked one touches us now. We coming into that powerful realm. We finna walk like us. We finna talk like us. We finna live like us. We finna be like us. We finna eat like us. We finna drink like us. We finna talk like us. We finna act like us. I'm finna act like us. I'm finna act like us. I'm finna be like her. I'm finna act like her. I want to be like my dad. I just don't want the image. I just don't want the likeness. But give me the spirit. Give me the spirit of Christ. So when the people see me, they'll see Jesus. When the 
people hear you, they hear Jesus, start talking that word. Get back up out of your dead situation. Don't let the enemy take you out and will. You got to fight for your life. You got to fight for your anointing. You got to fight for your glory. See, it don't matter to me. I'm on this road and I'm hungry. I'm hungry for that anointing. I'm hungry for that glory. I'm hungry for that power. I'm hungry for I want that power. I want that glory. See, you don't understand the importance of this word. See, I don't want a spirit of religion to come upon me. If you doing something that you weren't doing in the beginning, then something switch. If you was jumping and shouting and hollering and it was quickening you when you first got saved, what happened? What happened with somebody telling you about Jesus? With somebody telling you about a man that can do all miracles? About a man who healed the sick, who raised the dead? They used to teach that when I was a little kid. They used to teach the power. They used to teach the anointing. They used to teach the glory. People want to be like them. People acting like them. People walk like them. People dress like them. What happened if you done lost something that you once had? What happened to you? You ought to be on your feet shouting glory. You ought to be on your feet telling God, no matter what I go through, no matter what trial, no matter what it look like, no matter what my son do, no matter what my daughter do, no matter what my wife do, no matter what my husband do, I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to give you praise. Under pressure, you looking at a man. Soon as he came out of that tent, God hit me with a trial. My wife, she was pregnant again. Soon as I got there with the tent, God made her have a miscarriage. But I came to church that same night and preached a message on the power of Jesus. If he could give it to you, bless it. Be the name of the Lord. He give it to you and he can take it away. Bless it be the name of the Lord. You run about what you lost. I'm worried about what I'm going to gain. I'm going to gain that power. I'm going to gain that glory turn me up in the microphone it's time to go higher i want that power i want that glory i'm preaching to myself i'm preaching to myself don't give up tears get that power if nobody else want it then you take it you be like jesus you get that glory you get that power you get that glory you get that power then you get it if they don't want it Take it across the world. If they don't want it, take it across the world. If they don't want it, take it across the world. If they don't want it, take it across the world. I want to be like them. I need them. When I start preaching, something comes over me. I can feel it from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Y'all ain't understanding who Jesus is. Y'all ain't understanding that power. Y'all ain't understanding what you first had. When God first saved you, see, you'd have forgot who you are. You see, if you can remember who you are, then something in the inside will start jumping. Something in the inside will start rattling in the inside. Something will start picking you up when your legs don't want to stand. Something will start making you praise God when your hands don't want to move. You know who's going to come in? The drug addicts, the prostitutes. I'm talking about the messed up folks. So you finna see them get this power. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I slept for this. So you don't want that power. You know what you're looking for? You're looking for a handout. You want somebody to preach to you. And you want them to make you jump and to make you scream. But see, what you gotta do, you gotta check yourself. You gotta ask God, Lord, what's in me? Lord, why I done messed up at? Lord, why I done fell short at? I'm talking about the Bible. 
Bible say be ye holy for I am holy so you don't want to be holy no more you, if you want to be holy then this word that I'm preaching to you tonight it'll rattle something in the inside of you if you want to be holy then you'll pick that Bible up and you'll start reading that word if you want to be holy then you'll start fussing everybody out in the church if you want to be holy when church over with you want to be back in the kitchen ready to fight if you want to be holy then you wouldn't be standing up ready to box with everybody if you want to be holy then you wouldn't put your long dress on when you standing here then when you get outside the church you take it off and put your tight pants on and eat your crawfish and eat your shrimp you know why because God is looking for a people God is ready to raise a people up God is ready to change you but you asking for change but you can't get it you know why you can't get it because you won't stay in the world you won't stay in the world you won't ask God to clean me up you won't ask God to make me whole you won't ask God to make me overseer you want somebody to pat you on the back don't nobody pat me on the back I go at the I go through the trial at the trial at the trial at the trial but you can count on your fingers almost the amount of times when I call the man of God some of y'all call the man of God for everything you call him because you can't go through nothing you know why you can't go through nothing because you won't stay in the world you won't stay in that world God telling you to stay in that world get in that world and stay in that world get in it and stay in that world Get in it and stay in it. You don't want to stay in it because you're looking for a handout. You're looking for somebody to pat you on the back. See, we finna get preachers in this last hour. They finna go back to preaching that word and they ain't gonna worry about what the people say. They ain't gonna worry about what the people think. See, God is calling the people back to him tonight. He calling the people. See, I had a fussing demon on me so bad, but I told my wife and I told my kids today, I said, I'm gonna get delivered from that demon on tonight because you go home fussing at your kids, fussing at your wife, fussing about anything. I'm talking about you go home, you got an anger spirit, you mad for nothing, then you come up in the house of God, lifting your hands and praising God, sending up strange fire. No! God ain't looking for that no more. He's looking for a sincere heart. See, he's looking for somebody who's going to be sold out. He ain't looking for no, no hypocrites here. You want to be a hypocrite? Then it's a place for a hypocrite. You know what it's called? It's called a lake of fire. It's called hell. See, we got to start back preaching hell hot. I'm talking about eternity low. So you don't want to go there. But you know what? You keep on acting the way you act. You're going to end up there. You know why? Because God ain't taking no losses in this season. God is cutting it down. I don't care if you've been in the church 50 years. What that got to do with God? God will get rid of you like he did Saul. And he had to put an anointing on somebody else here. You don't want to be like Saul. You don't want to be changed into another person. Another spirit come up on you. See, see, you can't, you can't even imagine this. You don't even know what God did to Saul. Damn his eternal soul. And you sitting around here like you got tomorrow. Tomorrow ain't promising you. You looking at a soldier that's standing before you. You looking at a wall. Y'all done been through a heartache, pain. I'm talking about not just in the streets, but here. If I tell you my testimony, you probably wouldn't even believe it. But I'm still standing. I'm still, I don't care when nobody say I'm going to stand bold for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to preach this gospel like I'm going to die for this right here. See, you don't understand. You don't understand. You willing to die for the gospel? You willing to die? You willing to go hit the streets? You can't go through it when somebody talking about you in the church. You can't go through it when somebody bump up against you in the church. And you talking about taking this thing to the screen? How you going to take it to the screen if you can't deal with this little trial? How? You going to take it to the screen if you can't deal with this little persecution you going through now? Somebody say something about your leader and you ready to leave the church. What you leaving the church for? And you done been here 50, 40 years. And oh, oh, how you letting somebody get in your ear after you done been here? I'm talking about letting folks get in your ear, get in your mind, get in your business, come into your house, do what they want to do. You fellowshipping with folks who you You fellowshipping with people that's talking about Yahweh and doing now your mind all confused. Now you don't know which way to go. You don't know what to do. You believe in Yahweh. You ain't believing in Jesus no more. What Savior? You know what Savior? That powerful name of Jesus. It ain't number one name under heaven that man shall be saved. That's by the name of Jesus Christ. How did you get saved? How did you come into the house of God? You was crying out Jesus when you was up under that bridge. When you was getting beat by that man. When you were getting charged by that woman. And God brought you into the house of God. 
God and save you and clean you up. Now you almost at the brink of blaspheming. I know you don't want to hear this word right here, but I had to give your flesh something from the beginning. You know why? Because flesh don't want to hear this. Flesh want to hear something sweet to their ear. So flesh wants somebody to took their fans to itch their ear. I ain't itching nobody ears. You know why? Because God ain't itching nobody ear. He's ready for you to get sold out. He's ready for you to get committed. He's ready for you to get a mind like you first had. He's ready for you to get the Holy Ghost again. He's ready for you to get sold out for the gospel of Jesus Christ here. You got to understand that preaching is like this. I was preaching this a couple years ago and a man came up under the tear reaching in his hand like he finna pull his wrist out. I told him ushers, I said, don't worry about nothing. God don't give you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. See, if I was out in the streets and they put 350 cell magnum to my head and the bullet wouldn't go off, what make you think I'm worried about somebody killing me now? You know why? Because oh, oh, I'm giving everything. If I don't go down, then my soul is down to hell. But if I stand up here and preach this gospel and tell you to come back to Jesus, tonight is your night. Somebody else ain't going to get another opportunity. Somebody ain't going to get another time. I'm talking about somebody ain't going to get another opportunity. Somebody ain't gonna get another opportunity. Somebody opportunity. I'm finna get ready and let you go. Somebody opportunities for tonight is the night. Tonight is the night that you don't get another opportunity. I don't care if you young, I don't care if you old. Tonight is the night that you ain't gonna see. You sitting around and you got stuff in your heart. You sitting around, you bitter unforgiveness, and you think can't nobody see it. Yeah, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. He seek to prove it's mighty, but the eyes of the Lord is beholding the good and the evil. He looking at you when you go home and you in the bed. See, you done forgot what you are. You are a spirit seer. And you forgot. So you worrying about saying something out loud just cause your mouth ain't speaking but your spirit is talking loud. So you run, you forgot who is the original man. The original man is the spirit. And you forgot you go home and you, you see that sister walk past you. You smiling but on your face it's white as a puckers but on the inside in that dead man bones. You saying in your spirit. You talking about you cussing them out in the spirit with a smile on your face and don't understand whatever so or whatever a man sow it that shall he also reap see you sow it to the spirit you will reap life everlasting but you sow to that flesh you gonna reap corruption see you say you sow, you sowing in the spirit and don't understand. Now you mad at everybody because it seemed like your life ain't going nowhere. But see, you worried about what's coming at your mouth. It ain't about what's coming at your mouth. It's about what you saying to the original man. That spirit is about what you saying in the spirit. See what you saying in the spirit. How you going home and your husband asks you to cook something and your wife asks you to do something. What you laying there saying in the spirit? Why don't you do it yourself? You saying it in that inner man, that real man. So you worrying about this flesh. I almost said it. I almost hit my lips. No, it almost said it, yeah. But it already said it inside your spirit. And you just sold on that ground now. And now you worried about Now you worried, wondering why stuff is happening in your home. Because you're going to reap whatever you sow. 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 See, don't be worried about talking out loud. You better be worried about what you're saying in this inner man when somebody walk past you, man. I can preach that like that brother he ain't nothing I can do this I can do that I can usher like her how he gonna do this here? you ain't saying that out of your mouth but you talking in the spirit you talking in the spirit you saying little things in the spirit you saying little slick stuff in the spirit and God hear everything and that stuff then piled up and piled up and piled up and you don't understand why it's piling up why stuff starting to happen cause you done sold over here you done sold over there you done sold in this situation and just cause your Lord I ain't did nothing. Yes, you did. You ain't open up your mouth, but you open up your mouth. You ain't open up your mouth, but you open up your mouth. In the spirit, you open up your mouth. You keep saying stuff in the spirit. You keep saying stuff in the spirit. You got to shut your mouth and get a right spirit. You got to get a right spirit in this season because God is not playing. God is not taking no loss in this last hour. God is looking for a person that's going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. They ain't going to get mad and run over here and run over there talk about somebody over here talk about somebody over there 
slip out and go to the casino over here. You got to go all the way to New Orleans just to go to the casino. You got to go all the way to New Orleans just to have a daiquiri. You know why? Because you slipping and tipping. And then you come back to church. Can't nobody see what you done did, bro. You done sold to the spirit now. The people wonder why you done lost your anointing. Why you done lost your girl. But you ain't telling nobody what you doing. You ain't telling nobody how you slipping and tipping. You ain't telling nobody how you going out late at night. You ain't telling nobody how you letting that man come in your home. You ain't telling nobody because you got a disease in your body. You ain't telling nobody what's wrong with you. You ain't telling nobody because you know why? You don't want nobody to know because you the usher. You the head usher. You the head PA. You the head man in black. But you, I'm talking about a home monger like you ain't never seen. I'm talking about a, a daughter like you ain't never seen. In this hour, we finna get the right spirit in this last hour. God is finna give us back where we lost. God is finna take us back to that place where we first received them. So you worried about sowing? You worried about sowing to the? You worried about sowing to the? To to to, to, to You worried about what's coming out your mouth? See, I ain't worried. I ain't worried. I ain't worried about what's coming out my mouth. I'm worried about what's coming out my mouth. Because of the, the the original man, when God made man, He made him a spirit. God, for God is a spirit, and those that worship God worship Him in spirit and in truth. How can you worship God in spirit and in truth, and you got something inside of you? How, how can you worship God in spirit and in truth? How can you worship Him, but it, it ain't coming out your mouth, but it's in the inside? So you ain't speaking truth no more. You speaking a lie. So now, you know how I got this message? I'm ask, I was asking God the other day, Wednesday, I was like, Lord, what, what happened? What, what, what went on? I'm crying out, Lord. Lord, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm, I'm asking you, Lord, please, don't let this stuff happen. Lord. Don't let this go on. He said, son, let, just take a walk. Just, just turn your Bible and let me show you what I did today. So you got to understand, I don't care what you, what you getting away with right now. You always going to have to pay for that. David supposed to be out at the time when kings walk. He supposed to be out. I'm telling you, he supposed to be out warned. He probably be out praying. He probably be out doing something. He probably be moving. He probably be moving. He get up yawning. and he see a naked lady, a son bathing on top of a roof. You know what he did? The Bible say he took her. Now, now watch this. You already messed up anyway. Anytime somebody takes something from you and they took something, they took something, that means you didn't go with it. That means he already had a spirit of rape up on him anyway. You're going to take, take her, take her. How you going to take? She didn't want to go. You took her. And got the lady pregnant, then you're going to kill her. But then, see, flesh always forget. Flesh forget what it done, but God ain't going to forget nothing. God don't forget nothing, see. God don't forget nothing. I don't care if you go, if you pay for it 20 years down the line. See, see, David, he fast, he praying, he doing all this. Lord, don't, don't do this. No, David, you know why I got to do this? I got to do this because you sold some seeds. See, 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 now watch this. You can pray and God have mercy on you. But you 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 might well count on you gonna pay you gonna pay for that. Whatsoever man sow it, you better listen to me. Whatsoever man sow it, that shall he also reap. You don't understand why you in the situation that you in because you done sold to the flesh. Now your flesh and forgot, and now you wonder why all this stuff is stacked up. It's not that what came out your mouth. It's because you got to understand that the spirit quickens it. The spirit quickens it. The spirit makes things alive. So death and life is in the power of the tongue. Whatever you, the spirit quickens it. Don't worry about what's coming out of this. The spirit quickens it. What you saying in this inner man, you saying it when you, when you ain't saying it. Your mouth will be closed and you saying it. And you don't even know, you don't even know why all this stuff is just stacked up now. But now you got to pay for it because you've been sowing bad seed. You sowing bad seed, but you don't understand. Now I'm paying for all this. I ain't did nothing. I'm in the church, sir, but you're in the church with an attitude in the spirit. You talking in the spirit. Somebody, one of, one of the young brothers or one of the sisters get up and speak. You got a smile on your face, but in the inside you talking. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't nobody. They ain't nothing. They ain't nothing. Now, now you sowing seed. You sowing seed. You sowing seed. You sowing seed, you sowing seed, you sowing seed. And that stuff is going on with your body, going on with your mind, going on. You, now you don't understand what's going on. Seem like it hit you at one time because God do not forget. David, you're going to have to pay for this. You're going to have to pay for this. You're going to have to pay for this. I don't care how much you fast. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care what you do. You're going to have to pay for this. But you know what I'm going to do for you, David? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something for you. 
after I killed this, then I'm going to give you one of the greatest kings that, that ever was alive. I'm going to give you Solomon. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a son. After I do this, you're going to have to pay for this. Because you got to whatsoever, it's a law. It's a law. God have mercy. God have mercy on I know you don't want to hear it. God have mercy on you. Now you don't understand. Now, now you you moving from this place, moving from that place, doing this, doing it. What, what was you saying before them time when God started hitting? What was you doing? What was you doing? What type of seeds was you sowing? You need to go back on your ground. Ask God, Lord, put the axe to the root. Lord, please, Lord, pluck this stuff up. Get this out of me, Lord, please, Lord, whatever I sow, Lord, whatever I said, the sister that I said something to, the brother that I said something to, the, now, now you the soul see, God, I already told you, I visit you to the third and fourth generation of your kids. But see, now, now you wondering why, why something happened to your kid. Now, now he done went to jail. Now this, now this, all of a sudden he going on the straight now, now all of a sudden he get hooked up and all of a sudden he go to jail. What was you sowing? What was you sowing? That it, that it, it don't, it, you done forgot about it. Flesh gonna forget because flesh don't want you to remember nothing. Flesh want to be mad at everybody. Flesh want to be mad at the spirit. Flesh don't even care nothing about the spirit. It wants you to be mad. God, God sending me all through. I came in this church. Man, I'm going through hell. I'm leaving here. I ain't never doing that. I ain't paying no tithe. Now you already, you ain't got no protection for sure. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't, nobody better not say nothing to me. I ain't, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't coming to church. I come to church one time a week. One time a week, and you think you're going to be full of the Holy Ghost? A week of prayer at the house. This, this is the church. You know everybody's favorite saying, this is the church. But you go home, you ain't thinking about praying. You ain't got a prayer on your mind. 